how to create patterns in Canva, in particular, seamless patterns. Now, these are great if you want to create KDP covers that are unique to you, or if you want to create digital papers that you actually sell to your customers, either online in your own website or on particular platforms like Etsy. But not only that, you can also take these seamless papers and create like physical products using either Redbubble or Spoonflower platforms where you can create wallpapers and fabrics and tote bags and t-shirts all using these sorts of patterns. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creator Beat and welcome to our channel where we show you how to make money online with low content products like KDP low content books, printables and digital planners. So the first thing we can have a look at for the ideas is like these floral designs. Now, florals are always popular. Now, these are covers we cannot create in Amazon. We don't do spiral bound, but there are other companies out there where you can do spiral bound like Vivanti and Redbubble and places like that. But you can see that most of these like this here is using a seamless pattern. Now you can take those digital papers and then put them on Etsy and sell them as digital papers. Now, what do people use these digital papers for? Now they can use them for creating covers for KDP, but they don't use them just for that. They also use them for creating backgrounds on, say, cards that people are making, or they can also use them for digital planner covers as well. And like I said before, you can also go to Spoon Flower. And as you can see, a lot of these are seamless patterns that are used in fabrics and wallpaper and you can and you can join the platform by clicking on design and sell and then they'll walk you through so that is just one of the many ideas that you can actually use this so let's pop over to canva so here we are in canva and we're going to start designing so the first thing you actually need is a square now to do this all you need to do is click create design go to custom size and then I suggest using pixels and usually the highest you can go that you want, like 5,000 by 5,000 should give you quite a decent high resolution. You can probably go higher if you're wanting to make sure you get 300 DPI. So I'm going to choose the 5,000 by 5,000. Now, because I've got the paid version, I can do mine as a transparent. Now, if you haven't got the paid version, you need to select your colors now, what scheme you're going to have for your background, unless you take your project outside of Canva and remove the background. So what you can do is go and select your elements and make sure that if you are using Canva elements that you can use them for commercial purposes. I am just showing you this as an example. I try and get all the ones that tend to be free. So I'm going to just go through. You'll see these are all the ones that I've recently used. So I'm just going to select all the ones. So I'm going to go with that one and I'm going to put it there. I do want a white background and should I say a white space all the way around. I'll select that one. Okay, and I'll bring that down there. And that's that one and I'll change the colour. So a lot of these that are in Canva, you can actually go and change the colors. Quite like that. that I recently used. I think I'll have that one. Just for simplicity's sake. And again, choose the white. And again, resize it. Then I want something in the middle. So again, just going to see all. And as you can see, that's a pro version and it'll tell you the different license free for pro users. Get this image free. Now, if you're not a pro user, you would have to purchase that one there. So I'm just going to I might select that leaf to go in the middle. Again, I might change that color so it's more of a muted color. Then what I do is I download these. So I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to change name here and then I'm going to download 
transparent background for me. And there we go. So now I'm going to go back to uploads. And I'm going to drag that one up. And while that's uploading, I'm going to select a new page. And then I'm going to go to elements. Out of the recently used. And I'm going to go to grids. And I want this one here that's got two boxes and is vertical. I also want to get rid of that white spacing there. So I'm going to go to spacing and I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to go to upload and I'm going to click there. Now, as you can see, I've been experimenting with different ones. So I'm going to now double click so that it allows me to move the picture across with inside the grid. And again, I'm going to take that one and put that there and double click and cross. Now you can actually see that it's moved the images around and it's also cutting the flower. So what I can do now is put another thing in the middle. So come off that. I'm going to go see all again. This time I might put that one there. And again, I want to change that green so it's more, more in keeping with what I'm trying to do. So move that. Elements. See all. See, I might no, I'll stick like that. But you can put a lot more in and see what you get. Download. I don't want to download them all. I just want to download page two. So I'm going to download that. And when it's ready, I'm going to go to uploads. So while we're waiting, new page. And this time, elements at the recently used grids. And this time I want the horizontal grids. Again, I want to get rid of the spacing. And then I want to upload my new one here. That's ready. And drag and drop. And again, double tap on it and move it up into the corner. Same with this one. Double tap on and move it down. So that one's for some reason gone back. There we go. So I can put something else in there as well. Elements, get rid of the grids. See all recently used. I might put that one there, make it really small. Change the flower color to like a pink. I might also put it here. And I might put it there as well. Okay. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to download for the final time. On page three, download, download. Okay, so we've actually now created the seamless pattern, but we need to see it in action. And the best way of doing that is to actually create something like a digital paper size, and then you can reuse that digital paper for any of your covers or anything like this. And the best measurements I've actually found is another square, but this time it's 12 inches by 12 inches. So we're going to go back to Canva here. And we're actually going to create a custom size. So I've done 12 inch by 12 inch. So you go to create a design, obviously custom size, and then that's what you see there. And that tends to be about 2000 by 2000 pixels. So the reason why I'm doing 12 inches by 12 inches is because that's usually the size of packs for uh, papers that card makers use. They also use six inches by six inches. But like I say, the bigger you make it, uh, the less... Um, pixelated it seems to come if you need to resize it smaller. So I'm going to create a new design. And then I want my grids again. So this time I'm going to type grids. If I can actually type. And I'm going to go all the way nearly to the bottom to get the one that I want. And 
that it just populates. So there's lots, lots of options you can have for creating things on Canva. So it's this one I want here, which is um, four by four, basically. So I'm going to just click on it. I also want the spacing taken down to zero, but I also want this resizing. So it's actually the 12 by 12 inch. So I'm going to just bring that up. So that should be 12 by 12. And then I'm going to go back to my uploads here. And I've already uploaded the final one, the third one. And that's what we want, the one where we've maneuvered everything around. And I'm just literally going to drag and drop each one of these, I'm not moving it, I'm not putting it into place. And basically you'll see that the pattern, especially with the leaf and that flower there is now joining and there's no issues with it joining. Now, if you did a different size, say a cover size, it might not work as well. There might be gaps. So that's why I actually create this extra step where I resize it and then put it all together and it just makes everything a lot easier. Now, because it's the transparent one that I've chosen, um, it's a white background for me. So if I just duplicated this page, I can go in and then I can change my background. So that might be a bit too dark, so I can do that. I can also go and then do another change. Oh, that would not work. That certainly wouldn't work, but I could keep experimenting until I'm happy and in fact do a whole pack. Now if you downloaded them, so if we go to download, I'm going to download all of them and I don't want transparent background here now, although I could and then when I was creating the covers I could change them. So I'm going to open this one up and bring it in and as you can see there's no gaps or anything like that. Same with this one, there's no gaps at all. You can see that that flower joined up, that leaf joined up really well. So it's just a great way to make seamless patterns inside Canva. I hope this video helped you. If it did, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button as well, especially if these videos suit you. So while you're here, why not go and check out my Canva playlist. There's a great new feature with tables, which will help you create different printables and different products like KDP low content books.